everyone, this is Matthew Doyle for Autodesk bringing you another blog post tutorial on how to use the new level sync feature inside of Stingray 1.4 and Maya LT or Maya 2017. Now, anyone that's already worked with Stingray and Maya LT knows that the interop is pretty tight and that you're easily able to send assets from Maya or Maya LT using the Send to Stingray feature. While you're connected to Stingray, as I am currently, we look at the very bottom right here, it shows that I'm currently connected to Stingray. I can actually make updates and changes to those assets and see those changes in Stingray live. Now generally, however, this feature is for sending single assets to Stingray, such as a character or a prop or other things like that. You access this, if you recall, from the top menu. We go to the Stingray menu up here and uh, we can actually connect to Stingray and I'm already connected here. The new feature Level Sync has been added to this menu here and this is going to allow us to actually send entire levels to Stingray that we have built inside of Maya or Maya LT and then be able to actually make changes to our level in Maya or Maya LT and see those changes updated in Stingray. The other thing is we've got our live camera tracking here and we're going to go ahead and turn that on and so as I move around my camera inside of Maya LT here, we can see the camera is changing in Stingray as well. Now I have an empty project in Stingray here, so you're not going to see anything yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to send this entire level, which is composed of several mesh objects uh, of buildings and roads and so forth. We're going to send this all over to Stingray in one shot. Now to do that, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and just, we'll start with one asset here and we'll select uh, this particular, this tall building. And we'll go back to our Stingray menu. And the first thing we have to do is we have to set this up as an as an engine resource. Choose set engine resource. Now you'll notice here this target folder. I have put this in ahead of time, but basically what the target folder field is asking is for you to specify in your Stingray project what folder you want these assets to be stored in. So if I look in the Stingray project down here on the bottom under my project hierarchy, I've got a content folder already. So I'm going to store these assets in the content folder and then we'll just put a slash so I'll just retype this for you so you can see how it goes so we'll type content slash and we'll create a models folder and then we're gonna do another slash here and we'll call this uh, level one alright so now all of these assets as I export them will be stored in that structure now we can see here the asset name is already filled in for us that's the actual asset name inside of Maya or my LT that's the name of the mesh uh, we have some other options here and you know above these options we have our result and we can see what it's going to be saved as in our Stingray project and then we have these options here we have auto tag all untagged so we could automatically we could basically tell Maya to automatically tag all of the assets in the level here for us just by pressing this button and it will automatically put the name of that asset based on the name of the asset itself. It won't just put what's typed up here. This is just showing you the name of the currently selected asset and you could change that here if you wanted to. Uh, we can also clear tags on selected. So if I select a number of these, I can click this button to get rid of any tagging. And of course I can select tagged assets. Now here currently if I press this, obviously there's nothing currently tagged. All right, so we'll go ahead and select this one asset and we'll just go ahead and apply and close. And now this asset if we look down in the command line, we can see it did its job to tag this asset as an engine resource to be used by our Stingray project. If we go to the attribute editor now, and we go to the very first tab of our object here, this is the very first node of our asset, and we go down to where it says extra attributes and open that rollout, we can see now that we have this engine resource field, and it is properly filled in as uh, a tagged asset for our Stingray project now we can go over to our stingray menu and we can say send all or send selected if I click on the send selected options I can see here that I can specify auto tag again I can have Maya automatically tag the asset as I'm sending it uh, and we can say we can also check send missing assets so if we've already sent assets over to the stingray project and they already exist and we do this send uh, any assets that we send that already exist in a project are obviously uh, they don't need to be resent but what will happen is is this will send missing assets any assets that don't already exist uh, by checking this so we'll just go ahead and hit apply and close and we can see here that the asset is immediately sent over to Stingray I'm controlling the camera in Stingray now we'll go ahead and close the attribute editor and uh, we can see this is the exact same setup as we have inside of Maya LT so uh, we get our assets not only are they 
in the structure here. So if we look down at the hierarchy, I can click on models level one. And now we can see here we have the material as well as the mesh and the textures for this asset. But it's also been placed in our level here. And uh, we can obviously save this as a level file now. All right, so that's one asset. Now let's say I want to send the entire project and that's just as easy. If I just go over back to my Stingray menu, I'm going to go to Set Engine Resource again and this time I'm going to go ahead and auto tag all untagged resources. So we'll click that and when we go to select tagged, we can see here that now all of the assets have been tagged. So for instance, if I go ahead and select one of these meshes that I didn't use before, uh, let's just select the roads here and we go to our attribute editor. And then of course, again, to the first node of the object, again, under extra attributes, we can see here that the street has in fact been tagged. So now all of the assets are tagged and now we can go ahead and select them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send selected. So we'll go to our Stingray menu here and we'll choose send selected. I'm gonna go to the send selected options again. And obviously you don't have to do this every time. You could just click send selected. And I'm just making sure that uh, my check marks are the way I like them, apply and close. And now we're gonna send the entire scene over to Stingray. Now this is gonna take obviously a little bit longer because we're sending a lot more meshes in this case. And so you can see my LT is doing its work, writing the output files. And once that finishes, we should see Stingray pick up where my LT left off. So now we can see Stingray is importing the assets. Over here in the bottom right, we see importing files. And again, obviously the larger your level, the longer this is gonna take because the more assets it needs to import, obviously is going to impact the time it takes to do so. All right, so now that the assets have actually been imported into our project, it's going to do the compilation of those assets, basically preparing them for use in our game. And there we go, we have the entire level imported into Stingray exactly as we had it inside of my LT. All right, so now that we have our assets in our level, let's say we wanna make a change to it. Now the easiest change that we could make in a situation like this, other than say altering this geometry, would be just simply to move these assets to another location. So let's say I want all of these particular buildings to be moved over just like this, and we'll find a good spot for them here. Let's just say we want them to be moved right there. We'll just go back to our Stingray menu and send selected. And there we go, we see the change updated inside of Stingray just like that. All right, so let's say we want to make a simple mesh change to our object and one of these objects in our level and see that updated inside of Stingray. That's easy enough to do. Uh, basically just like moving an asset in the level, we can go ahead and zoom in on this building here. And let's just say we wanna make the roof a little taller. So I'm just gonna go into face mode and I will select these faces here and we'll just drag them up like so. And then when we hit update, there we go. So that asset's been updated inside of Stingray, just like that. So I think you can see the power and flexibility of the new level sync feature. It's gonna allow you guys to really quickly get entirely built level that you might've built inside of Maya or Maya LT. It's gonna allow you to get that quickly into Stingray and then of course, if you want to continue to work inside of Maya or Maya LT, you can obviously update the assets by moving them around, uh, making changes to the mesh itself. And of course, you could even make changes to the material uh, because of course, Stingray and Maya share the same material system, shader effects. So if you made a change on shader effects material, uh, that would also be carried across into Stingray with the level sync feature. Now remember, you can also send your changes from Stingray back into Maya, and that's easy enough. If I were to just select building A here, and then find selected in asset browser, and if I right click on the asset here, I can of course send over to Maya or Maya LT, depending on what I have installed. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful for showing you guys basically how to use the new level sync functionality. It's not really that complicated, but it is gonna be a huge time saver for getting your levels into Stingray. Thanks a lot, we'll see you guys next time.